A very good morning to you guys. Welcome to Asaki Online. This is the Breakfast Club. My name is Brighton Nube. On the 3rd of February, we're going to the by election and blow out Pelanda, but Chabalala constituency there. We are going to be voting for an MP. There's going to be a buzzing one, an interesting one, election there coming the 3rd of February. Today on the show, we're going to bring you a different story around from away from elections and politics. We want to hear about issues of technology, innovation, as well how our schools can embrace innovation in our schools. Joining me this morning is the director for Info Inno, that's my cousin and Joanne joining me this morning. Good morning, ma'am. Welcome to the show. Good morning. How are you? I'm pronouncing your name very well, right? Yes, Makosa Zana. Makosa Zana. Yes. Uh, and Duane, right? Duane, yes. Let's talk about Info Inno. What is Info Inno all about? Okay, so Info Inno is a digital literacy company. We provide uh, mobile library services to mm. schools. We also do uh, grant writing for businesses. We also do corporate uh, trainings and team buildings. And we are also working on starting something to do with um, arts and culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's talk about the issue of the mobile uh, libraries, right? Mm -hmm. I was saying to earlier on to say growing up we used to have those uh, housed libraries, right? Yes. How, let's talk about innovation of having mobile libraries. Yeah. So you find that uh, most of these newer schools, they don't have access to these community libraries that you're talking yeah. about. And some of those schools also don't have school libraries. Mm -hmm. So we then come in with an innovation to say, you know what, you can still enjoy the privileges of a library mm -hmm. even without having a physical library library at your school. Mm -hmm. So hence the mobile aspect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's bring in the issue of corporates now. You've been working with many corporates in terms of also team buildings. Mm -hmm. And someone watching the show can say, ah, I can overlook the issue of team building. How important is for a, a company of a group of people to have a team and that can be done the issue of different activities? How important is team building? Yeah, I think that's really, really important. And we are actually trying to even push it to school, yeah. for schools to also embrace the issue of team building. Mm -hmm. Because um, Team building is not just uh, a thing that is done maybe for the HR, uh, you know, just to get things going. But by team building now, you're motivating your employees. Mm -hmm. You're also showing them that you are serious about building them up. Mm -hmm. So you find that um, it also brings in a certain element that is not found in your day-to-day, yep. -day, you know, activity in the workplace. So we believe... Uh, team building is really important mm -hmm. because it's a platform for people to express themselves outside the workplace and it's a good way of actually mm -hmm. addressing some grievances. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I would really recommend like for corporates and even for schools mm -hmm. to really consider that aspect because yeah. if you are working with people, they have needs mm -hmm. and you need to motivate them, yeah. you need to show them, you need to appreciate them. So one way of you know getting to know them beyond mm -hmm. Um, you know, the workplace is mm -hmm. having a, a team building session. Mm -hmm. You've been working with schools in around Bulawa. How has been the reception? I know sometimes when you try to bring innovation ideas, like, ah, no, no, no. How has it been the reception for the parents and the schools in Bulawa? Yeah, the reception hasn't been um, really, for, uh, I can say, forthcoming. Yeah. But um, you see that, like, when you're dealing with the schools, the directors and the, the teachers, I'd say they are actually bringing it. Mm -hmm more to us than the parents yeah. so they are actually bridging that gap that we have so it also saves us from dealing directly with the with the watch with the with the parents mm -hmm. because you know there's this saying that the teacher is like the the, the first mm -hmm. parent of yeah. the child if the teacher says you do this mm -hmm. then the parent will also follow suit yeah. so we've been privileged in that regard whereby we don't exactly need to Mm -hmm. reach out to the parent per se mm -hmm. because our actual client is the child yeah. and the child is the teacher in class if the teacher approves then it's easy for us to work with mm -hmm. them but also mm -hmm. maybe i can ask around each of parents mm -hmm. why is it difficult for parents to to come in terms of, in terms of uh, i'm fully embracing these innovative ideas your spelling bees your mobile lab why is it difficult for parents to fully embrace these new ideas i think for them um it's also a lack of exposure mm -hmm. Because, you know, a lot has changed. Yeah. The way we are learning today is different from how we learned back in the day. Well, I'm not too old, but yeah. like um, take a decade ago mm -hmm. and how things are, do, are, are going today, is, it's quite different. Mm -hmm. So embracing technology is something that is not inborn. Mm -hmm. It's something that people can really decide. It's something that you, you, you really decide mm -hmm. to to actively seek after technology yeah. because there are a lot of technological you know, tools out there to, mm -hmm. to, to be used. So I think most parents don't exactly give themselves that time to really like research and see how best they can use these tools even for mm -hmm. helping their learners, I mean their children in their education journey. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that, that that's one thing and maybe the lack of reading culture yeah. 
because if people are well read, they will then get to know about all these innovations. They will get to, you know, try out even those things. And if I'm to also add on like a, a book definition, like they would also say like we, we've got different levels of adopters. You've got your early adopters of technology. You've got the middle ones, and then you've got those who are, you know, lagging behind. So I wouldn't want to categorize people, yeah. but I would say that it's something that is there and mm -hmm. that is a reality in the parents that we meet in Zimbabwe. But also speaking of the issue of the written culture mm -hmm. and also the issue of embracing technology, I find sometimes you want to let to open them, but they don't know how to use it, right? They have books, but they have never read those books. How do you go back then to the culture, cultivating the culture of reading and fully embracing technology? How do you go back then to say, let's cultivate the culture of reading? So what we're doing at him for enough, um, we've seen actually that problem mm -hmm. and we're actually trying to address it. So the way we're doing it, we also bring some like a follow-up library yeah. activities, if you can put it. So we've got one pen for the next for next month around 10 February. Mm -hmm. um, you've got what we call International World, World Read Aloud Day. Mm -hmm. So we want to commemorate that day. And through that commemoration, we'll give every learner who's a member of our library a chance to read a book. They hold a book and they read aloud. And for those who want, they can actually tell us what the book was about. Yeah. So that's also meant to really start inspiring them to really love reading for themselves and to be able to read and to actually tell your friend, ah, you know what, this is what I read yeah. from this book. And the way we want to, to do it, we're also you know, trying to bring in innovation. Yeah. So we also want to make it inclusive and open for their parents. So on the day, we're not just going to limit it to the kids only, but we'll also bring the parents as well. We've got a list of personal development books, like your rich dead, poor dads, those kind of books. Yeah. We also want to give those books to what? To the, to the parents for them just to rent for the day and yeah. they read them. Because monkey see, monkey do. If yeah. they see their parents reading, mm -hmm. They are also going to watch yeah. to start reading. So it also starts with us mm -hmm. leading by example. Mm -hmm. So if they are given that right, you know, platform and the right um, mentorship, mm -hmm. if I can put it like that, then it becomes easy for them to then embrace it and to also start like reading for themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think um, it's it's something that has to be done, you know, structurally, mm -hmm. not just you know talking to 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 the level of children. Yeah. But if we can start it at family level, mm -hmm. we bring the uh, the aspect at family level to say, okay, we are, this is us trying to reach out to you to say, okay, here's a book, read, and you can even read for your for your, for your child on that day. Mm -hmm. That way, they can also see, it, okay, you know, I can literally read a, a physical book because now. Everyone is engrossed you know, in the technological yeah. devices. So we are then trying to bring them back to say, yes, you can use your technological devices. But from my experience, most of the people that are actually uh, call, that call themselves readers, mm -hmm. they always say it's difficult for us to read using our phones. It's difficult. It's dis distracting for them. So why not get a physical copy? And that way you're not also infringing in anyone's copyright. Mm -hmm. So for this event, are the dates out? Is this part of the planning phase or this is now out? Yeah, the date is uh, tentatively 10 February, mm -hmm. but we're still working on getting a suitable venue. We had one venue in mind, but unfortunately, for, for some reason, um, they've told us that they are closing down the venue, the barn. That's where we wanted to host it. Okay. So now we're still looking for um, a suitable venue for the event, but definitely the date is out mm -hmm. and uh, we're going, you're going to be seeing more of the, you know, the flyers and promotions yeah. towards that day anytime from next week. But mm -hmm. someone can say, I'm watching the show, uh, and I'm listening to you, but the child in Makaya, rural, deep rural areas of Matebele North, Matebele South, Bulawayo, they, are, they want to be part of this, but they feel like they're left behind. Mm. Are you planning to maybe spread your wings to rural areas of uh, Matebele then, perhaps? Yes, definitely. Actually, last year, when we were hosting our spelling bee, our inter-school spelling bee, we actually had um, one inquiry from a rural school, mm -hmm. and we were so excited to have them on board. But unfortunately, from the time they were inquiring, it was a bit too late for them mm -hmm. to give them the words and mm -hmm. for them to really like you know participate mm -hmm. but definitely we are open for that and um i'll be honest um with sponsorship it become it will become easy for us yeah. to do that because um when you're calling in all these people then you know from the different um you know remote areas there are obviously some expenses and you know they need to be transported and mm -hmm. things like that so if we can have maybe 
some kind of sponsorship and not even sponsorship, but partnerships. Mm -hmm. And so that um, we, we realize this dream, we would be definitely happy to, to do that. So we're looking forward to having you know, rural schools participate in, this, in these tournaments that we're hosting this year and the other activities that yeah. we're also planning to have. Yeah. Let's move on to the spelling big competition, right? Mm. Let's look, talk about your love for education. What inspired this love for education and also to empower young kids who are at school? Okay, so I'm a librarian by profession. Mm -hmm. I studied library information science at NAST. Um, yeah, I have a master's degree in library information science. And um, the reason why I went to master's level was um, I wanted to understand more. Well, I'm an entrepreneur as well. And I felt I, I want to enterprise in something that I love. Yeah. So that's when I then decided, okay, let me try and see how best I can monetize this. And um, I was quite fortunate that... Um, I've had partners, I've, I've had, um, you know, organizations like the U.S. Embassy in Zimbabwe funding some of the projects that I had. And because of, you know, that thing that there's this, there's this next person who's also yeah. seeing the vision that you have. So that is what has been fueling me yeah. to push even further. I've worked with ORAP. ORAP has actually donated some of the books that I use. Mm -hmm. um, I've worked with the Zimbabwe Library, which is based in Harare. I'm, the model that I'm yeah. used, that I'm currently using is a model that I was taught by them. Mm -hmm. So it's, I, I would say what is encouraging me or what is fueling me is, um, of course, yes, it's something that I, I love, but it's the support that I'm also getting mm -hmm. from like these corporates and even individuals who are also seeing the vision that I'm also seeing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and well, my parents were teachers. So, <laughs> also, right? <laughs> so, yeah, my, my parents were teachers. Um, my mom is still a teacher now. And um, they call it what? Upward social mobility in, yeah. in sociological terms. Mm -hmm. My dad started as a teacher. He then became a headmaster. He worked for the Zimbabwe Teachers Association. Mm -hmm. And now he's working for the public service. So I saw growth in, in you know, in, in the education sector. And, yeah, I guess they also were somehow showing me, you know, the direction that I could follow. Not like I was really forced to do it, but mm -hmm. I developed an interest. Yeah. You're part of some mentorship program for women under the US Embassy. Talk to us about that training. How was the experience of that training? Okay, so I've done two trainings under the US Embassy. Uh, the first one was called Person Point. And that was the very, very mm -hmm. first um, um, entrepreneurial program that I attended. Mm -hmm. And... We were only two who, who were actually entrepreneurs mm -hmm. to do with education. Yeah. Then the rest were all different other, uh, other different sectors. So being accepted for that program for me, like I'm saying, like having people yeah. believing in you, that was a, a, mm -hmm. a game changer for me. So um, it, was, it was quite exciting. And I learned a lot about financial literacy. Mm -hmm. I learned, um, you know, the importance of, of uh, formalizing my business. That was the first thing. Yeah. And through that one, we then got the opportunity to apply for the next one, which was Academy of Women Entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Now that was also hands-on, taught us a lot of things. And at the end of that course, we also had an opportunity to apply for grants that was uh, funded by the USADF, United States of America, Africa Development Fund. Mm -hmm. And I was also privileged to get a grant for my business, which has to do with mm -hmm. education. So because of that, that then really fueled me and pushed me to really see that, okay, if, you know, U.S. Embassy is seeing something in this, then it means there's something yep. to it. So it has then pushed me to, you know, continue mm -hmm. doing what I'm doing and also, you know, learning to network with yep. other women in, in, in education sector mm -hmm. and even beyond. Yeah. Speaking of networking, man, and also how big is networking? How important of networking for your, for your business, for your entrepreneur? How big someone's watching the show, perhaps can, I'm always networking, but I no results. How important is to network for you as an entrepreneur for your business? Networking is the most, one of the most important things because for me, I believe networking is more like uh, marketing your business, yeah. but you're marketing at, um, at, a, at, a, at, a, at, at the same level. Mm -hmm. You're subtly marketing yourself because mm -hmm. when you're talking to the next person, you are not really like pushing, pushing. It's not like you're, you're going to a cold market and you're trying to get someone to listen to you from scratch. But if you're at a networking event, everyone is open, everyone is ready to listen to what you have to say, and you also need to listen to what, you, to what they are saying as well. So I believe it's also, it's, it's a two-way, you know, two-way street. Um, you say something, someone says something, and even without you saying, 
as they are talking, you can see how best can I can I can I be relevant yeah. to this person? So I believe networking is really really important, and you never know whom you are meeting. Mm -hmm. You never know um, you know the connections that yeah. they have because sometimes you don't exactly need. This, the, the particular person that you're talking to, but you need their networks, yeah. you need their contacts. So if you are in the same platform with that person, mm -hmm. then it, it it also opens you up to what? To their networks. Mm -hmm. So you also then get their networks through networking. Yeah, moving mm -hmm. on to the spelling bee, you grow up watching TV, man, you always see the spelling bees from other countries, right? Yes. But you're doing it now physically in Bola. Talk to us about spelling bee competition. What is it all about and how do we do it? Okay, so yeah, spelling bee is not a new concept. Mm -hmm. But um, we also try and bring in some different flair to it. So ideally, um, spelling bee is giving children a list of words, English words. They get time to really read them and master them. Yeah. And then on the day of the competition, you just pick randomly pick any word from any of those lists yeah. that you'd have given them. So what we then did, um, we, we followed the English one, but we're also bringing in a STEM concept into it. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that we did, um, we we started with the science kind of words, whereby we had the English words, and then we also added some scientific words. Mm -hmm. So we looked for words that have to do with science, and we also embedded them into the, the list of words. Mm -hmm. So as they are spelling on the day, if they spell those uh, words, the scientific words, they get more marks mm -hmm. if they get them correct. Yeah. And then um, from the last one, last event that we had, we were working with the museum, which was our main partner, and what we did, we then came up with ways to do with history and monuments. How cool is that? Yeah. So we also had the learners, um, you know, spelling those kind of words. And those learners who actually spelled more of those words, mm -hmm. they what, they got more marks. Mm -hmm. So this year we're looking at um, going, um, you know, all out, looking at the technological aspect. So for the technology aspect now, we we'll need to then find partners to do with, um, you know, networking and things like that, mm -hmm. because we want to make it online and live. Yeah. So that's so that is exciting, and you know we're also bringing that technology into mm -hmm. what into the into the education yeah. sector and just get the kids excited about it. Mm -hmm. But also, if you may agree with me in terms of if you look at our own languages, just language languages, they are slowly dying, slowly fading. Mm -hmm. Our kids are don't speak English than our Ndebele, right, or Kalang or Shona and so on. Are you going? Are you looking into doing spelling bee in Devele or Kalang or any local languages? Languages. Funny enough, um, we love um, having some library evaluations yeah. um, from the schools that we work with, and there was this why one child um, he actually told us is like, ah, you know what? We want to have spelling bee in Devele. Yeah. And this, this, this child is Caucasian and is like, no, I don't want to do an English one. I want to do a spelling bee in Devele. So it was funny and it was exciting to say, wow, so they actually want this. And from what we've been gathering um, from, from our researches, we've seen that, yeah, schools are actually reaching out to say, get us more of your Devele, your Shona literature and things like that. So this is something that is also yes, in the pipeline for the year, whereby we're also going to bring in not just spelling B, but we're also going to try and um, you know have like maybe reading um, camps yeah. where we have learners come through reading vernacular books, something like mm -hmm. that. Also work on issue of research writing. You also work on issues of grant proposals writing and so on and so on. Maybe talk to us about that in terms of grant writing and also research writing. Talk to us about that. Yeah. So we find that actually um, I have experience in writing proposals mm -hmm. for European SMEs that time need funding from the European Commission. Mm -hmm. So as I was doing those proposals, I felt like, no, but I could also use the skill to help someone locally in Zimbabwe to get what, to get funding. Mm -hmm. Of course, now the European Commission only funds European SMEs, but if we can find like local um, corporates or organizations, grant funding bodies, mm -hmm. then I would be happy to help people to what, to also get that grant fund. Mm -hmm. So what we've done, we've, um, subscribe to, it's called Funds for H NGO, mm -hmm. and you get some alerts on available grants and things yeah. like that. So we've worked with one um, community-based organization, mm -hmm. and we've been writing their grants for them, um, applying for, for grant funding, mm -hmm. and yeah, just coaching them, because some of them will be like, no, just coach us, and so that it's not always an overhead for them. Yeah. But just coaching them, okay? Well, this is what um, you know funders look for. You need to get this, and it also goes back again mm -hmm. to having your your proper record. Yep. So if you don't have things like your tax clearance, your registration documents, you are already what cutting yourself short. Mm -hmm. So it is also us, you know, trying to 
uh, encourage especially women-led businesses to formalize so that yeah. it becomes easy for you when you're what? When you're looking for grants. Mm -hmm. yeah. Guys, if you're just joining us, this is The Breakfast Club. My name is Brighton Nub, and my guest this morning is Makosa Zanandiwen, the director for Info Inov, talking to us about technology and also how important education is and also issues of mobile library systems. So say, adopt a library and come up with innovative ideas to push for the preservation of our languages and also for the spellings, man, for kids. Remember, also I saw earlier one who was saying, looking at some of the schools that are working with, yeah. when are guys coming to the other side of town? Your Manduandu, mm -hmm. your Mapugutuana, where we learned, man? When are guys come into those uh, schools you know it's been actually my dream to get to those schools but unfortunately now um there are certain f rules that we need to follow mm -hmm. we've been going to the ministry because we apparently need to have an, a permission yeah. letter yeah. from the ministry for us to be able to go to those schools so we're still trying to get that permission letter mm -hmm. once we get that letter then it becomes easy for yeah. us to go to to your yeah. and all those yeah. kinds of schools so yeah just wish us luck and maybe if you know how we could express ourselves maybe better and make them understand yeah. why we are doing these programs why we feel those schools are government schools particularly mm -hmm. are also going to benefit from the program then mm -hmm. it becomes it will become easy for us mm -hmm. but in on our part we're actually good to go we just need to get that um the permission letters yeah. first and then we can actually get to them because we've actually had some head school school heads actually saying no come to our schools yeah. but first of all get that permission yeah. letter so they are ready for us mm -hmm. but the only thing that is um really holding us back is getting that uh, permission yeah. letter from the ministry then we'll be able to go to those schools i know it can be a struggle sometimes but also in every successful story there's a struggle in it right mm -hmm. what's all the challenges that we've faced throughout this process as an entrepreneur you know sometimes you sit down think of capital think of sponsors what are your major challenges that you faced during your inter uh, entrepreneurship journey yeah i would say I've, I've made quite a lot of challenges quite a lot of challenges and um, obviously, one of the major ones was, you know, getting the actual the right finances to really push your vision forward. Um, I, I I tried to really like do it myself because um, if I was lo looking at um, one event that I did last year, I really had um, a hard time bringing it to life because I couldn't hire extra hands because of the income that I was getting then. So I had to do everything by myself. And at the end of the day, now. Um, the main challenge that I had was the execution was not exactly the way that I had planned because I, I wasn't able to what, to really get um, the kind of assistance that I, I needed. Mm -hmm. So I'd say um, the challenge yeah, really that we have is, um, you know, support mm -hmm. yeah, from other, you know, corporates or I don't know, other related businesses to really like come together yeah. and, you know, push a, a certain objective and uh, that way you know you can even do more because if you're saying like what you're saying that how come we're not going to these schools yep. we can go to those schools but it also talks of capacity now and now obviously when you're starting you're starting small you're growing gradually mm -hmm. and you don't want to over promise yep. and under deliver so you also find yourself so second doubting yourself mm -hmm. thinking am i really good for this can i really do this mm -hmm. because now you really don't you really don't want to to portray yourself as someone and you fail to watch to honor your word yeah. so that's another challenge that I've, I've i've faced and um what another challenge that i've really faced is getting like the um, the the right staff mm -hmm. who actually understand your vision and who really want to push with you because mm -hmm. you you have someone today and you are you are working and you're pushing and you're thinking okay now we're set and then now the next thing They've rushed to the yeah. second, they've rushed to another job offer and things like that. So that is a main challenge as well for me, whereby I can't do everything yeah. by myself. And uh, another main challenge that I had really was, yeah, like getting myself out there. Mm -hmm. I think that's been my major challenge. Um, like um, I tried by all means not to become a charlatan, you know, where yeah. I, you're all posting and you're portraying yourself yeah. as this person. But come reality, you're not exactly that person. Mm -hmm. So I don't know um, if I'm the one who's really shortchanging myself or mm -hmm. if I'm really like um, in need of maybe someone to do that social media marketing and all. I do have the content. I try and take pictures here and there, but I don't really like put it out there. Yeah. So I think that's, that's another major issue for me. And funny enough is 
I sort of like learned how to do, um, you know, virtual assistance. So yeah. things to do with social media management, I've tried to do it. I, I did it before. But now if you're an entrepreneur, mm. you are the one who looks for, for sponsors. You are the one who looks for, you know, for, mm. for your clients. And, you know, you, you are literally yeah. everyone. Some One of the departments suffers. Mm -hmm. And one department that has really suffered for me is the marketing and, yeah. you know, getting myself out there. As a librarian, right, a student librarian, uh, you've done this thing before. Mm -hmm. Would they, we are still stuck in the old library systems, but now we have innovated and now there's online library systems. Talk to us about that. Mm -hmm. Are we slowly embracing the online way? We spoke earlier to say there's this um, issue of maybe audio books and so on. Yes. And Mapu online and so on. Are we embracing those things fully or are we still stuck in the past? Um, we are still stuck in the past, to be honest. Why, why though? Are we, why, why are we still stuck in the past? Um, I would, I, I'm not quite sure um, because what we've done now, we created a digital library. Yeah. And we wanted to roll it out to schools because we understand, yeah, people talk about technology. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's roll it out. Here's a digital library. Mm -hmm. But the uptake was was really discouraging yeah. now. So I think um, it's also on the, on the schools. I, I, I would say that, um, you know, education institutions even from primary or high school level mm -hmm. i believe they still they they actually need to start having departments like your research and development kind of not like an office office yeah. but even maybe they can maybe say their it teacher mm -hmm. to also research on technology mm -hmm. and how the school can benefit from those technologies how they can embrace it mm -hmm. because sometimes when us as external people are bringing these technological mm -hmm. issues to them say no you can use this for your classroom you can use that they don't exactly take it with much enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. Well, some of them will be thinking, oh, okay, this one is just trying to yeah. get money out of us and, you know, kind of that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But if they have a dedicated unit in their school that is actually pushing for mm -hmm. technology, that will actually help them mm -hmm. out to actually figure out different technologies that they can use on their own. Mm -hmm. I said this library thing and working with schools, you're yeah, also into modeling. <laughs> I happen to be one of the judges of the competition that you were in, in, into last yeah. year. Talk to us about the love of modeling and also how do you balance all these things in modeling? Okay, so um, I really didn't know that I could model. Yeah. So I believe I have an open mind. And when the first time I actually modeled, well, that was my second pageant. Yeah. So I just told myself, okay, let me just try it out. I have nothing to lose. So I then decided to go for it, yeah. plus size modeling. And yeah, I managed to become first princess and yeah. the first time. So it then motivated me to then try so the again. First time? Tell us the first time. Okay, so the first time was Miss Portilisha Zimbabwe. Yeah. That one was actually, yeah a bigger one because mm -hmm. it was uh, we we're competing with people from all over Zimbabwe yeah. so I really it was yeah it was just like okay let me let me let me try let me try yeah. it out and see I mean there was some financial you know yeah. uh, reinvestments involved I was like okay mm -hmm. um let me just try you never know and I tried and I actually succeeded mm -hmm. so it then gave me the hope to say okay let me let me try it again and yeah. see how it goes what can you say to a young girl out there who's watching you who's inspired by your story uh, we're trying to venture into this and that, but also a school are being body shamed because of the airport. What can you say to them? Please encourage them, speak to them right now. Yeah, I'd really say that you, um, you know, we are f created um, in a wonderful way. And the first thing that you need to do is to accept yourself the way yeah. you are, love yourself, and show people how you want them to treat you. Mm -hmm. So if you are also not confident about yourself, the next person can also see it. But mm -hmm. if you're confident about yourself, you love yourself, and you are true to yourself, then it becomes easy to also show people how you want them to treat you. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's personally what I live by. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mokosan, thanks so much for joining us on The Breakfast Club this morning. Thank you. All the best in your future endeavors. Thank you very much. Right, she's the reigning Miss Plus You, man, beauty pageant for 2023. And uh, she's the director of Info Innov, focusing on education and innovation around Zimbabwe. Please do support your brand and also maybe do share your social media platforms and your phone number as well. Okay, so we're on Facebook at Info Innov, Instagram at Info Innov, and uh, yeah, my phone number is 0778. Five five eight seven three two. Repeat again. Zero seven seven eight five five eight seven three two. Thanks so much for your time this morning, man. Thank you, guys. Hope you guys enjoy the show. Please do follow the site on YouTube, uh, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and do subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. And hope you guys have a blessed day and do enjoy the rest of your day. For myself, Brighton Mube, it's bye for now.